to be looking at on how I would use Rust to write my GPU driver for the Linux kernel. So, how's everyone doing? Hello! Hello, hello! Uh, hey, headphones are too loud. Uh, hello! Is everyone, uh, is everyone ready? I haven't actually prepared anything, so uh, we're gonna start from scratch uh, and try to figure things out. And I think a few people who are, uh, familiar with Rust might be, uh, joining in, so... Yeah, um, hope that it should be pretty interesting. Hello, everyone! Hi! I see a lot of uh, familiar faces. Uh, oh, also, I did update the, um, emojis. Um, so we did add a few now that I have a few more, um, channel members. So, um, yeah, feel free to use them. Uh, oh, hi, y'all. Um, kernel code today. Um, I'm going to be just sort of sketching out um, how I would solve some of the problems that I have with Rust. Um, in, you know, just in user space, just as a test. Um, so, you know, if it looks uh, like it's going to work, then I can just take that and like copy and paste it wholesale into an actual kernel driver and start building it uh, that way. Uh, all right, let's, uh, so let me first tell you a bit about what the problem is and what I'm trying to solve here. Is Rust confirmed to be in the next version or delayed? Uh, we don't know. It's kind of up to Linus, uh, Linus uh, when he merges it. Um, so I'm kind of uh, like on the edge because obviously we can't write the driver in a language that is not gonna is not gonna be supported in Linux. Um, but it's looking like it's gonna be supported pretty soon, um, and we don't mind if it's not upstream, you know, like right now because neither is the driver. So. It's fine if we have to um, downstream um, Rust support, as long as, like, you know, Rust isn't going to be delayed until, like, you know, a year from now. Um, so, but it's looking pretty good, so it might be, um, okay taking the risk now. Um, so here's the issue. Um, and a good example is probably here in init data. Um, so we have to support multiple from our versions and also multiple GPUs. Um, we'll find out how different that is with the M2 when I uh, look at that, but at least multiple from our versions is definitely uh, necessary. And um, Apple doesn't keep any ABI stability um, guarantees between from our versions. So for example, I have only support two right now, um, 12.3 in my prototype here, um, 12.3 and 13.0 beta four. Um, and in this case, um, between those two versions, these are the differences. And so in this structure, which is called, which I mean, I called, um, AGX Harder Data A, um, there's a bunch of fields that got introduced between both versions. So the layout of the structure is different. There's some extra stuff in the new firmware version. And, um, so in Python, I made this for a thing that will dynamically insert or remove the field depending on the version that is set. Um, and so the thing is, you know, if I were doing this in C, um, there's only really two ways of doing it, right? Um, you know, I could have... Something like this, uh... something like that, and then um, I would have to compile the whole file multiple times so that we support multiple firmware versions at the same time. Um, so I would need something like, you know, uh, when writing functions. Um, I 
I doing something like that and then to find that when compiling and you would need multiple compilation versions. And it, it's kind of a big mess, right, and see. Um, and it, uh, it could get very confusing when we have um, some fields that only apply to some firmware versions. And then in the code that actually accesses the fields, we also need to... Uh, yeah, so I know I, I know I can do this in Rust. What I'm trying to avoid is not doing this, right? I'm trying to avoid doing this um, in Rust. Um, so... It, um... From the uh, discussions I had in uh, Twitter just in the past uh, couple of days, um... There's no sort of built-in uh, mechanism to do what I want in Rust that I think would work. But what Rust does have is um, very flexible macros. So you can actually write code that runs at compile time and processes the source code, really the token stream, um, in any way you want. And so that lets you build um, like domain-specific languages, but also, um, you know, you can add features to the Rust language. Um, so that's sort of the direction that I think um, I'll be going into. Um, so let's look a bit about the, uh, the uh, at how that stuff works in Rust. Um, so we have, um, there's two ways of doing macros in Rust. One is using macro rules, which uses um, pattern matching, um, which I think probably wouldn't work because it's not flexible enough. And then there's the one that actually um, lets you um, like run any code you want. Um, so that's procedural macros. And there's different types of proc macros. Um, so they have different syntax, right? Um, one... Hi, Tanamot! Um, so one of them would be... Um, runs kind of like a function like this. And I think they can take, um, blocks, if I'm not mistaken. I think I've seen that. Um, hold on. Yeah, so you can, you can, um, you have to put it in the parentheses, but you can do it like this, right? Macro rules is still useful while um, writing proc macros. Um, in what way do you, would you use like combining combining procedural macros and uh, macro rules? That sounds interesting. Yeah, so here's an example, right, um, of a macro called seek that repeats um, um, you know, its uh, its contents. Um, any number of times with a... It's like a for loop band that runs at compile time. Um, which is kind of similar to what I want to do, right? Um, so one way to do it is like that, with a, uh... With a proc macro that has the body inside. And then the other way... You can find that, that is, um... Derive macros, and I don't think derive macros work, or at least not for everything I need, um, because derive macros actually just add to the source code. They don't mutate um, the source code. Um, so they're useful for adding implementations, um, but they're not useful for like what I want to do, which is specializing a single sh um, structure definition into multiple um, structures. Oh, the macro code doesn't care about the brackets. Oh, that's good to know. Um, so, the drive macro, though, does support this um, helper attribute concept. Now, I don't think I can use drive macros um, to do what I want, but... Um, I mean, although I guess I could... I mean, I could have this struct... Can I be a dummy including all fields? That could actually be useful, and then just uh, have the drive macro generate all the firmware variants. That might actually work. Work. Can it output um anything? Yeah, they can create new items, so that might actually work. It wouldn't change the um, structure definition, but 
maybe it's actually useful to have a structured definition with all the members um, across all possible firmware versions. Uh, but we might have fields that are only in, like defined differently in different firmware versions, so that doesn't work because they would collide, right? And then there's attribute macros, um, which can be attached to individual things. Um, and the other one is... Right, so they can take arguments like this, right? Um, and so they apply to the subsequent item. Um, and so this would work for an individual construct, I think. And so the question kind of is, um... My instinct would be to avoid a macro for the structure itself, and instead parameterize it by a constant num that dic um, dictates the version. Um, what do you mean like that, by that? Like taking um, a type argument? But how would I have fields that are conditionally included based on the... Uh... Uh, my voice is sounding a little rough. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, yesterday I kind of went to karaoke. Um, and also I have a bit of a cold, so... Um, yeah, don't worry, I'm drinking water. So, please explain what you mean by that. Um, because that sounds like it could be interesting. Right, so you can take the enum and then... How would the um, enum control which uh, members exist? Traits and associated types? See, this is phrase that I'm not, uh, that I'm, I'm, I'm a Rust newbie, so... <laughs> I'm really not sure what I'm doing here. Oh, so let me look up, um... This has any B rippers for this? And I'm gonna have to use Pact, because I know there are some unaligned, uh... 64-bit uh, members, unfortunately. There's also the pattern of using a uh, generic study show. Yeah, um, that was, uh, right, that was the one using uh, the um, type um, as empty for the news fields, right? Yeah, that also, uh, I think that would also work. The question is sort of how to um, parameterize it over the firmware versions, right? Um, so like, <clears throat> if I, doesn't, wouldn't I have to have types for like every, like, supported firmware version combination to define, like, fields in that subset of versions, or? Also, keep in mind that this has to be ergonomic to write, um, and easy to read for people not necessarily familiar with Rust. Um, so, like, I would, if, uh, if the, um, choices between, um, you know, using a lot of, um, generics and, uh, and features like that, and, um, and having, like, simpler macros, and having a very complicated macro, but then a very clean syntax for defining this, I think I would go for the complicated macro, because, like, the macro, you write it once and it works, and then all the other, um, like all the extra structures you're writing uh, are a lot cleaner, right? But I'm trying to learn about associated types. Uh, see if it makes sense. Oh, 
that like an implementation defines an associated type? Let me Google that. Yeah, the tricky thing is making them conditional, right? So then an implementation of the trait specifies the types. And then that controls the like the signatures and stuff, right? Within that trait. So I'm getting the feeling that might be useful for the actual, um, sort of, manager, um, uh, objects. So here's the, here's a bit of the, the other story, right? Um, so besides this version conditional and stuff, um, these structures are GPU side structures. So they are shared with the GPU firmware, um, they live in shared memory. Um, and, um, so they are kind of treated, um, as, you know, insecure, so to speak. And then there's gonna be, um, you know, objects in kernel land that manage these things, right? So I'm probably gonna end up with, um, like two different layers, like the struct that defines the firmware types, and then um, just, you know, regular structs uh, and, uh, and traits for the actual, um, like business logic, so to speak, to handle all of these things, right? So maybe this associated type stuff would be useful to declare which specific version of a, a firmware struct is used for a given implementation of the manager? So my ideal definition would be something like this in C, but without the horrible if def, right? Um, something that allows me to um, have multiple structure definitions. Um, are conditional on firmware versions like this. Let me get an actual example out maybe that we can use. That's a bit simpler than that. So let's, we can use this one as a real example. We can simplify it. Um, but I think it's good for uh, as a demo. So here's a structure that is mostly int32 and int64 types, um, you can see that there is a conditional, in fact, this was removed in, in 13.0 beta 4, um, which makes me wonder, is this because they changed the padding rules? Because it was a work right before a 64-bit member. I know, but here's an uneven number anyway, so it wasn't that. Oh, sorry, I think our links don't work. Let me see if I can get it, but... Uh, can you, like, um, remove the uh, protocol or something, see if it gets through? Or you can paste it on IRC, sorry. Um, because the yeah, links uh, get eaten by the, uh... By the chat on YouTube, unfortunately. Ah, 
this 3D. Let me get it. Let me see if I can get it right. Just one sec. We do have a Discord server, the uh, No Pointer Life Discord. So you can also send it there. Okay, let's look at this. So. And right, so the tricky thing about this is that. Um, Like, in this case, you're sort of, um, directly, um, like, you need a, you need the specific fields separated out, right, for, um, into separate, um, implementations for every, um, structure definition. Like automated with a proc macro. Also, um, keep in mind that I might have multiple dimensions for the firmware thing because I might have things that are conditional on both firmware version and what GPU um, we're targeting. So whatever we do, I don't want to restrict myself to one dimension there only. We have another example coming. So then I wrap my head around um sort of how this ends up for multiple fields. Right, that's that ends up being a full version, which is a trade, so then uses the associated type. Yeah, I I I think it makes me I I get how this works. Ah, 
Mickey is always here, here since two for a few and few times. I'm sorry. <clears throat> um, so, right, so this, um, this makes sense, but then the issue is that we need, um, like, for every possible field type, um, for every possible... Oh, so it ended up as, as, at F32, right? So, like, every possible combination of how a field changed, um, between versions ends up having to be encoded in the, uh, field types trait, right? So really, the, the tricky thing here is that I want to encode the conditions for when fields are appearing, disappearing, or changing in line here in the structure, um, instead of having to like indirect through another type, because that gets uh, pretty confusing, right? So I think we're gonna need um, a proc macro to make it ergonomic. So then the thing is, if we use a proc macro, um, how would we handle the um, generating those that field types trait? Would that be a specific? I guess it would have to be an individual trait for every struct, right? Because they would be processed individually. The good thing about doing it with a macro is that, of course, we can always change the implementation without totally changing the source code. So then we decide that, like, we can use the type system more hygienically to uh, handle this, then that can just be a change to the generation, right? doing this with uh, in this way is that we're not actually duplicating the code um, in the macro we're just using a conversion parameter which is interesting um, because then I can just pass that around um, so how would the implementation look like for example so I have some code um, this is just a struct right but what about the um, something else that uses it, it would also have to take the V parameter, and then how do I say make some code conditional on that V? Yeah, this is pretty much what I want. Um, so what about the, um... What about the actual implementation, right?
So for example, um, if I have code that assigns to um, here since two, that's gonna take an integer if it's two or newer, but you know, it's, it's nothing otherwise. So that code either needs to just um, like be written in a way that it still works and compiles or like compiled out in that variant, right? Manner says the actual implementation would take a while to write and would be big. Well, I mean, that's why I'm here today. Um, and uh, I've been known to do like 10 hour streams, so I'm not scared about that. Can those Boolean queries, uh, control if code is compiled, though? As in code that wouldn't compile, um, if the condition is not met? stuff for uh kind of due to the things we're doing but i don't think i need that all this complexity for that um like variable concatenation and all that so general idea doesn't look that bad and it's only 300 lines at the end of the day So let me um, get something. First, let me find out what version of Rust the Rust for Linux stuff is using. So we are on the same page. And I can Rust up that. And so we can play around with the proper version. Edition 2021. Is there a suspension anywhere? One sixty two zero or newer should work, but I don't know if it needed nightly features. I think it did. How 
the Rust Linux driver compiled with the official compiler or in GCC Rust? I think Rust over Linux is using uh, the official compiler. So it should be 162.0 and the nightly version, right? Okay, so this is actually like super recent. I mean, this Linux is only using nightly anyway, um, but I'm not sure how many nightly features are blessed. Um, So let's get the rest of stuff. You know, I still have a rest. I mean, I know I have a system rest, but I don't think that's new enough. Wait, I. Yeah, 161. We need a. Uh... 162 so that yeah it's just used rest up to get nightly anyway hopefully this will be okay and we'll go with x86 for now just for testing Instructs really? Ah, huh. oh, that's interesting. There's like a migration thing. Yeah, this might be a good thing to use as a reference.
Persian's item. Can we get the actual GitHub for this? Version item. Let me give you another example. That very assistant. Ah, uh, a non people. Okay, that's cute. <laughs> I see what you're doing there. That's cute. with a new uh, nightly requirement which isn't great um, and yeah I don't think we want to use the uh, macro to refer to the extract um, but then as I said the, the tricky thing is how uh, do I conditionally generate the code for that let's start making some uh, this cut. I don't remember how to make rust <laughs> um right anymore. Hard on you. Oh, and that makes a separate kid repo, but that's fine. separate crates, right? 
Are the macarons? So then I actually need two of them, right? Probably steal that workspace thing. I don't know if that matters, but and yeah, there was a proc micro uh, example, I think. from here. What's Proc Macro 2? Right, okay, that makes sense. I don't know how much of this I can use in Linux though. Should be an example for Brock Macaros. Right, so the dependency, we do need the macro for that. The dependency in the main thing. Um, Actually, let me look at what the Rust for Linux stuff is doing for Proc Macros, because I know they have some already. I guess they don't use cargo too, right? They just use um, make files.
Okay, so that here's one, right? Um, there's the macho macro. So there's a few examples of mimics already. Um, so we can definitely add stuff here. And that means that it should probably be something generic so that other um, kernel modules can use it. For example, um, like if the TCP driver ends up doing something similar to this, that would make sense. kind of syntax makes sense here. Ah, just one sec. write out an example of kind of what I want. Maybe use an actual example. Um, I read just a partial um, version of this for um, for now. So let's say that would be, um, maybe we can use it a bit easier, um,
And this is another thing where, um... I would want to have this be a more interesting type than U64 for, um, GPU side pointers. So we can talk th about that a bit later. Honestly, those are probably just uh, 64 bits. That's the other thing, right? There's a lot of 64 bit counters that I just have down as 32 bits because I don't know any, I don't know any better. So let's say this is one example. Um, and I prefix everything like that to make it a bit more obvious. Um, so this one requires the versions to be declared um, at the top of every structure, which is a little bit annoying. Um, because I would really just want to have globals for the uh, supported versions, at least per file. But that's another issue that um, macros... generate arguments to specify the versions. Because then I wouldn't necessarily have to um, enumerate them, right? Just unlist them like that. Because the macro can look at the token stream, but the macro... How would it handle the... Let's look at the examples from before, and that you made me... If I can find them. Mm, right. Um, so if we do it like that... the representation because the firmware versions don't uh, are associated with anything in fact we haven't even decided how um, we pass that to Linux so yeah there's gonna be a mapping somewhere somewhere and that doesn't really matter right now
way this would translate, um, if we do this kind of macro business, And so the tricky thing is, the macro doesn't know what versions are available, right? So how would it generate these implementations? How would it enumerate the available firmware versions? It only gets the input token stream and output on token stream, but it doesn't get the rest of the code, right? Yeah, but then the thing is, because there's going to be multiple invocations of the macro, unless I have like one global macro, and that wraps everything. structure I end up having to enumerate all the versions and that's also not nice because it's gonna be a lot of structures and I want to be able to just add a version globally and make the changes I need and not have to add it to every single structure from like environment um, variables but uh, more traits and do tell Across the V2 plans, great here, V2 plans, great. Oh, God. <laughs> uh. Yeah. This, this looks painful. <laughs> um. I mean, it might make sense. But, uh.
keep in mind that, like, everything like this that we try to add into Linux is gonna be an uphill battle. There has to be a better way of doing this. Um, generating all the struct up front, do you mean, um, like actually repeating the struct with the, with the macro? Yeah, the concatenant thing, that's, that's kind of what I was, um, leaning towards, right? tokens but it wouldn't um let it know the the actual contents of the enum right your versions live in a separate crate yeah um so that would work um except that ideally um this proc macro business would be um, generic however i guess what we could do is just um have the proc macro like take some kind of version structure or something and then um, have different names, um, so it would be like something like that, and then that sort of encodes that it has to go look at those versions. That might work. I mean, I would want this proc macro to be in common code, but then you can have the code, um, like, take an argument for the versions and then just call it, um, a number of times for every use case, right? So then you would have, you know, a, a single implementation, but, uh, multiple callers, like AGX. And then so the actual macros are separate for each use case, but the implementation is still shared. That might work, right? Something like that. Um, would it be able to use that token to... Yeah, I guess I could just index into a... Into some kind of table, right? That would work. That might work. If I do it like that. Is 
so that best bud were just generating the variants. Um, so they wouldn't be arguments like that. Um, and how? So if it's a derived macro, it would just be making multiple variants of it. And then enum is just a set of constants. Trying to see where this is going? Um, it would allow comparisons that... Um, we still need the macro to enumerate them, right? So it needs to know at least the... the bounds, and... Constants wrapped in a name. <clears throat> but how, how does the macro get access to that, though? Because the macro doesn't get access to the name space, right? Let me copy some stuff around while the, uh, chat. The problem is that the actual firmware versions are potentially dense in the poly reels. I don't know what that means. <laughs> too much about the naming for the firmware versions because we're only going to support I mean basically these are just names for specific firmware versions 
So as far as the code is concerned, they might as well just be, you know, any num. And we don't care about um, preserving your cross updates because um, that's, uh, you know, this is all gonna be for a single build, right? So it's totally fine to have them map to integers. Basically, it doesn't matter if the mapping changes from, uh, you know, as the code is changed, um, so... Mapping the versions to integers is no problem. Obviously, there's gonna be some code somewhere that maps, you know, some kind of version ID from the device tree to the list of versions and the integer somehow, but I mean, that can just be a switch or something, that doesn't matter. So what I'm still trying to figure out is, okay, how does having, um, how does having, um, numbers like this help the subject at hand? I mean, obviously we can compare them, um, but the macro doesn't know the values, right? So how would the macro, um, know that, like, this version maps to such and such number. It would just have to be some kind of a... Like, array of strings at that point, right? Because these are tokens. So it looks like this doesn't actually get as much. Yeah, that could be generated by a macro. Um, though then wouldn't we have macros depending on macros depending on macros that would have to be like different crates? Sounds a bit painful. But I don't mind too much um, having to hard code those um, um, arrays in the macro um, as long as we can like specialize it like this um, to different um, use cases. I think that's probably okay. question I guess it's just okay so let's say this generates the um, different variants of the struct but wouldn't the proc macro create have to depend on itself if I'm using a macro as part of the implementation of another macro Wait, generating a lookup table that would get invoked at runtime, but 
um, like passed from one macro to another, you mean? But if the macro only, only takes this body of, as an argument, how would it act, um, how would it get access to this, these enums? Even if I wrap them in a macro, and like, there's no states from, uh, macro invocation to macro invocation, right? Combinations are actually valid, um, because for example, G14G will only support like this firmware version. Um, though it's probably okay to generate the code anyway. I just don't know if it would. Uh, it might. Yeah, it's probably better not to. So there would be some kind of logic. There would be some kind of logic anyway for um, listing the valid combinations. So I think it's okay to hard code that in the macro somehow in some kind of um, structure. in the proc macro crate. I read about that and the problem is that macro invocation order is apparently not um, strictly defined. <laughs> um, so I don't think you can necessarily count on that. <laughs> but yeah, let's not worry too much about enumerating. I think we can deal with that. Um, We could probably also pass um, like an argument to this that specifies conditions for the whole thing so that you could further restrict the um, the versioning um, for something if necessary. Like if something only exists on your firmware entirely, um, you could uh, probably also just have an argument for that. is okay this is for an um, derived macro but in this case we wouldn't want derived because we don't want to add um to this definition and um, we want to mutate it right especially because for example we could have a case where we end up with something like this and obviously this is only going to compile if properly filtered right um, so the pair structure doesn't make any sense, so a derived macro doesn't make sense. Oh, Arthur says, I mean, I feel your voice got more natural. Thank you! Um... So, if it's not a derived macro, um... It would have to be either a function-like macro, an attribute macro oh, sorry this is an attribute macro not a derived macro so then that would be fine I think wait hold on I'm confused that right right that's for yeah so it's not derived sorry um it would be yeah an attribute macro would work I think.
So I think it's, um, we're gonna go with that. Okay, now that Ricky is... Okay, so that's for the um, structure, but we also need... Um, we also need the users, right? So let's say we have... Um, And then we would need multiple implementations for the different versions. Um, so how would we do that? Like we would have to append um, to the event for that, I guess. Um, so we would need, but we would need both the implementation and the, uh, structure, right? Um, so how does that work? Let me remind myself how the... Info stuff, it's always, uh... Because normally it's a struct type, um, for the data plus a, uh... It's a trait, right? So you could have like... Just an example here. That I guess that would have to return and a result or something. Uh, well, I just not return anything for now. It's just an example, anyway. Um, yeah, we need to dynamic dispatch at least at some level on the uh, firmware version. trick here is we need that for the versions um so we need uh we basically need a struct and the implementations right but then we need the i guess we could just have it for both though that would work. And then I need something to, um, I need something to pass, um, the, um, the, like, append the, um, version to that. Type, but the thing is, um, it's a bit more complicated like that than that because I don't think we need associated types because nothing is gonna actually take um that structure as input or output though. It's just um, it's just an implementation of details, so I don't think we need um associated types. So the trick here is, okay, I need the buffer manager info thing. Um, so we need some kind of like, you know, token thing here. How did Seek do that? Seek did a, uh... Yeah, 
Do they have like a, a special token for that? Maybe we can do something like that? Because I've seen that mentioned. Right, I see that. Um, but we still need the version, though. And this is still a macro, so... I mean, I could use Concat Idents, but I'm not sure if that actually would change much because this this uh, macro still has to do stuff so might as well just do that too oh the linux one is more flexible where am i crust macros It's a proc for the implementation and this might need to take like self or something can you tell that my brother's the thing a bit yes um and stuff right By the way, probably some default stuff. Um, I know there was a thing. Because most of the time, we really want all those default uh, zeros to be there. And Jennifer, yeah, sure. Right, and this would be much because I actually want to mutate it. Um, so just as a test, um, yes, it needs a specific layout, um, which also means I need the uh, layout stuff. It should be packed because of the weird alignment things we've run into. Like this one, the 64 bit being uh, not aligned right. Depending on the version.
Does it have C and aligned? Right, I guess it needs these. I guess it needs both, right? Yep. And actually, um, want this because I don't think they I don't think I recall ever having weirdness at less than four by boundaries I think but I'm not sure oh, we can we can see that yeah um later though aligned and packed at the same time because some of these types do actually require alignment and they're packed simultaneously which sounds really silly um but i can't so and that will have to be handled uh, by the allocator anyway that's not a big deal though because we're obviously gonna need a you know custom allocators for all this stuff anyway so yeah so this as i said like it is packed because this doesn't have any padding right now it shouldn't have any padding Let's say we're going to do that. I'll be right back.
Okay, so let's try writing some code that does this. Um, first, let me comment out the implementation just to get started with this one only. Um, we don't necessarily care about the enums. Those are gonna go in the macro anyway, eventually. So how do you make a proc macro? I'm gonna look at that seek um, a macro which looks similar to what I'm gonna end up doing. Let's do the mod parse. How does the Linux thing do it? Just to make sure that... Okay, so let's just use proc macro. And so macro rules is for declarative macros. This is a bit more complicated than that, so... It's gonna be a proc macro. Token stream, um, and then I'm actually expecting either struct or impulse. So I would, I guess, I would expect that's not an ident though, that's a keyword. How does token tree work? Print this. There was, um, I think there's a way of doing that. It's lib.array, sorry. Proc macro attribute on the entry point function.
Right, uh... Is it pod? Takes two arguments. Oh yeah, why did I have it with this one? Oh, because the other one was that, yeah. That didn't work. Right, I need to import it. How does that work? Okay, that did work. That did print. Interesting because I have all this derived stuff. I need to skip past that. I need the mem stuff. Uh, where was that? I think I closed it. <laughs> anyway, I'll fix that later. Let's uh, let's get the macro doing the right things. Yeah, so same as for the uh, syntax stuff, right? Does Linux use that anywhere? Um, let's see what Linux has. Mm, doesn't look like they use sin. Sorry for that. And it wasn't merged. Thanks, SD man.
Anyway, yeah, it doesn't look like uh, we're gonna get soon, so... For better or for worse, uh... I think we need to, uh... Roll our own parser here. At least it only has to handle a few specific cases, though. Oh, the ST, if you think everyone asked about that, um, it's just this. It's just to get rid of the um, output. Uh, okay. So I guess I need to turn it into an iterator. Let's look at the other um, kernel macros. Oh, we can actually just get all the tokens like that. Um, but I might not want to do that. I might just want to go... Uh... Turn it into an iterator, and then I need to, um... on this uh, and looking for like if I get a punct that's a um, hash then I need to uh, pass it through and the group after that and so oh you can do stuff like this and match that's cool know that So how do I push to like another token stream? Oh, just push. Oh wait, I can I just get the last thing and that'll be the group and then we have the ident and the uh, right and um, for token and item am i not using the iterator in another way though i think i am though because i'm gonna be calling next on that afterwards um Inside, would that work? Yeah, because I still need to call next inside that afterwards. Um, so let's make a new token stream. inside the body?
Any lead for that or just... Frost nearly! Yeah, so then I do need the uh, lead for that. Um, so in this case, I would push token and then also push the whatever comes next. Which is the group. Um, actually, can I check for that? For now, um, just pass that through, and then we have debug out. And um, so now that what I'm looking for is I didn't. So I don't cover it up. Um, so if you have a struct, then extend the token. Probably need to check that. I don't, um, so I can just use that. I need something for the versions. Um, what's the right way of doing like an array of strings or something in Rust? Um, 
We still can stream not take uh, individual tokens. Yeah, extend one, right? try to start putting it once uh, just to see what happens um so well this is nightly um You just want the list up, so I guess it's like that because there's gonna be different combinations, right? Um, get the name out of here like it's only gonna get assigned ones way of doing this with this return um hi mary yeah i can make it a block um and then how do i oh you mean like a like literally return does that work Yeah, but uh, I think I like this better. And then the trick is that that's not here would be be panic, right? Uh, because otherwise that's not gonna compile. Um, and then I can collect the body. So now we go through the versions. Does that work? Or do I need like an iterator for that?
Can Brick take an argument? Is that a thing? Wild, it has to be a loop then. Ah, I see. Ah, I, I think it's just fine for the block. Um, I think I need into iter for this. Turns that anyway. Um, and then I need to make the name version. So now I have the ident. Okay, don't need anything for that. Cool. And, uh... Just call that ident. Uh... How do I concatenate strings in Rust? Is that just plus, or...? That's an expression, so also... Can I get like a Rust language server or something? running it though. I don't know if that's just missing or what. Maybe the... Oh, 
Let's use an Everest analyzer. How do I get that? Can I cargo that? Oh, rest up. You know, that's the source. Is it rest up? Ah, there it is. Let me just copy that. Put the right path in there. I can get info on here apparently. Oh, it does have cargo in there. Oh, but it doesn't have. And the tool chain belt. Let's try that. I just want rust search though. Rusty, um, I think it also needs that in the environment. Maybe it doesn't find it. Um, maybe this doesn't actually go in the path. I said I can just use that, right? Yeah, um, so I need to set the path for that. Just what changed there? I don't think anything changed there. Oh, that doesn't find it. Uh,
that might actually just work. Yeah, it's working, it's working. Um, so if one's a token streamer, a token tree, not an ident. Let's go from the beginning here. What about a token tree? Because it's a variant. Uh, wait, option? Oh, because it's not, yeah, um, right. I need to, um, I guess just unwrap that. Gonna panic anyway if it's not there, so okay. Expect ident. Does that work? Is this because name? I'm gonna need token tree. I dent on that. That is. Token stream where? Uh, return is okay. That's the problem. Um. I guess not great, but And now I need to convert a string into an answer. 
Yeah, but break with audio only works with loops, not wires. Wait, why is this failing? I think this was working before. Um, does it really need a type? Oh, I need an iter for this, right? Right, another token is... And that should fix that. Oh, I can do the type in first in that. Oh, that's cool. I keep getting there and now I need Oh, uh, extend Can I use And I guess I need to copy that I guess I guess, I guess it consumes it a clone. need to repeat the stuff before that because we need to derive the same things
how do I make an empty deck? Is it just like... Something like that? doesn't work, um, but also let me fix that first. I guess I have to be in the type like that. Yeah, okay. Um, and then I would ex I would put this in the head. And then I can get rid of that. Which makes it easier. Uh, oh, and now only the attribute thing is complaining. Which makes sense, because we're not using that yet. Okay, what now? Oh, STD man. Uh, wait. Hmm? Unicode? Oh, there was over here. Oh, sorry, Unicode there. Okay, it works, it works, it works, it works. Um, so now the actual version thing inside. Um, so how do I compare versions? I have the versions like this, but then I actually need to break it up into multiple. So that's going to complicate this a bit. Uh, give me a sec, I'll be right back. I'm actually gonna have a little snack before I continue because I'm getting a little bit hungry. Um, so just bear with me. Um, and I think a bit about how to continue after that. But basically, it's gonna be looking at all this um, the group that contains the contents. Um, and it's gonna have some interesting stuff in there for the overt um tags. So just one sec.
I'm done. Um, yeah, so I was just, I just had an idea while doing this that I would actually want to support something like this. I mean, there was kind of funny syntax. Um, because this would also work for generating code, right? At this point, um, for the implementation, so it would be kind of like an if, um, if that makes sense. And uh, I wouldn't make it required, so it should still support the single mode. Um, so let's see if um, if we can make sense. Of I'm gonna implement the brace one first because the braces um, nicely um, delimit the content. So we're basically gonna look for a punct. I'm gonna make a new function for that. Um, this is backwards because this is not C. Frost baby. <clears throat> and then I don't need to clone this anymore because I can do that here. Uh, Two columns. Okay. Oh, proc micro crates cannot export. Um, this should be public. Okay. Um, so now. Same kind of deal here. <clears throat> All right, I'm um, just the. You can just take that. So now match on that. Again, if we get the hash. Uh, otherwise, push out to the body. And then if we get the hash, um, we expect a curve after that.
Okay, that one's uh, in the kernel, but we might as well copy it here because they... Well, it's not punk this group. Um, might as well create that. I mean, I could ask the rest for Linux people, or I could just send them this once I'm done and see what they say, right? Um, might as well try something. Doesn't mean I'm gonna write the whole driver without, you know, asking anything to anyone. So what's wrong here? Um, not token stream, token tree into. Okay, so that's for everything, but that's not the case here. I just want an iterator over, um... Something like that. Now, how, how do I get an iterator in here? That's an associated type, um, so... Is that it? And then it needs to be thin.
um, something like that. You want to reference to that? Wait, why is this returning? I guess it returns references. Okay, about that, of course. But it still wants to... Uh... that is bracket and then we have a stream which is another token stream and that's gonna be interesting um Um, so if it's one of the R tokens, I'm gonna do stuff with it, otherwise... Um... Ah, oh, right, into it, it moves ownership of the data. Um... Which we kind of want. Well, not necessarily... It's just Ether for now. Oh, but there's not Ether for that. It has to be into Ether. Then 
we do whatever our magic thing is. Actually, let's just skip it for now. Um, otherwise... Um, otherwise push the token, then... That's not gonna work, is it? Um... Because it moves that ownership, is that even gonna do the right thing? I don't know, actually. Wait, where'd the group thing go? Oh. Yeah, but it's a stream inside the group, right? See what we did here. Um, I think that didn't match. Uh, if I comment this out, what happens? I'm still getting that. Is that not working at all? Oh no, it does, it does get the token, so the token is praise. Oh wait, um, I'm, I'm a level of indirection out. what I'm getting there is well done uh... right we get the identity group which is everything else I need to actually expect the grip. Um uh, although for functions that's gonna be more confusing though. Unless I recurse, I guess I would recurse. I guess I would have to recurse for this to make any sense. Um so some token if it's a punct, otherwise if it's a group recurse.
Ah, uh, but I need to... This is a... Um, right, uh... Groups have a delimiter and a stream and a span. So how do I make a group? And where am I, Proc Macro? Delimiter stream. What does that do? I don't know what's more stylish for this kind of thing. That's push. Um. Need a token tree on that. And now the filter version story. Uh. All right, I can cargo format, right? Ah, uh, that might not have done it because of. Okay, that's how that works. Um, and now I have a stream uh, that I need to... I guess I should really take an iterator at this point. It has to be an iterator, right? Mutable reference. Oh, is it because of that? Because this is one the stream. Um
Dr. Theater Crips. Uh. Wait, where? Oh, there's Ether token. Is that the... Wait, what is Ether token tree? Can I just move that, uh, like, into... to be a does it really need to be that oh because it's dynamic but ah right like I want to pass the iterator into the filter versions stream but now it wants into your hair oh that oh sorry and three should be the same, right? Um...
Wait, but it's not into iterator. I just, I want to get the actual iterator. I couldn't do it like that. But that's not. It has to be into it, but I don't want that. I want the actual iterator, right? Can't I pass the actual iterator instead of the input into iterator? I mean, I guess that works, but. Wants to move that. Because it's mutable. I just do that. And then that's not mutable. Moved value. Value moved. Why? Why does it say it's moving token? Oh, is it the debug doing that? Oh, okay. Right, and then here it fails for the same reason. Partially moved token.
find that I'm with a group anyway. Sorry, not group ID. I need the um uh, that uh Okay, what's the other? I'm still getting that. Not debug that. Sounds like it's doing the right thing. Eighteen. Yeah, it should be skipping it. Why is it even trying to parse that? Oh wait, there's something here. I don't get why it's not combining, does it... Does it just not like the... The syntax, like, at the, at the input? Okay, first let's do one single version because it's too long. Which is the one 
in the chicken floor now? Yeah, that one. Um. Like this, is it somehow like... But I am wearing baby bib um, braces. Yeah, I think it's just that, because this works. But this doesn't work. I, I am inlining it. Um, I'm actually just removing it right now. And it still doesn't uh, like it. So I think... I think it's just that it's somehow parsing the input instead of the output. So maybe this can't be a... Maybe this can't be a attribute macro. Maybe it really has to be a function light macro. I mean, that looks, that looks sane, so... Drive, is it? Oh, wait, attribute macro is also. But it says the return token string replaces the item with an arbitrary number of items, so... Why doesn't it work? Hold on, um... Uh... No, 
it is getting replaced um, because the original thing doesn't exist anymore, so... Why is that trying to parse that, though? Is it just because it, like, asserts that the original code is that it rust even, even though it's going into a macro? Right, so that's, that's, uh, that's a bit of an issue. Is there another way of grouping this? I guess probably not, right? Yeah, there's no, like, I can't use parentheses or anything. Okay, that's fine. Um, I can live with this because usually they're not grouped like that. I do want the braces to work. Um, I want slightly different behavior for the code and for structs. So in this case, if it's a struct, um, well, first of all, I'd have to check for the version here, but we're not doing that yet. Let's just assume we drop it. Um, drop onto the comma. I think that makes sense. Right, no braces there. Okay, so that works for the for that and I can make yeah, it compiles because it's getting ignored. Um so that works for the struts. Um so I guess no grouping. Which is okay. Um as long as I can make that work for functions. So let's see about all this other stuff.
And the toddler birthing is not done yet. Let's just fake it for now. Uh... And then we have... And that didn't even tell me where it panicked, though. That's not fun. Oh, because that's, yeah, um... So in this case, I want Impel. Whatever comes next, which is... The name and then the four. And use the next one as the name. Like fields and have the verse, the type, yeah. But then I have to like backtrack, which is a pit. Um, and and that doesn't help because the whole point of doing that, I mean, this already works, right? What I'm trying to do is group and um, group multiple fields. Um, but it's not a big deal. Um, if yeah. Okay, no page count on... Okay, that works. And bias at least. Um, the braces aren't super critical for the, uh, for what I want to do. The more important part is that they work in code. And this one is not a struct. Yeah, so that doesn't have that. Um... Okay, so that's not filtering. Um, and if it's not a struct, uh, we get the first one. See if it's a group. Um, This would be more, more like, uh... Grab the first one, uh, match on that. If it's a group... Then, uh, drop it. I 
I'm gonna move this uh, to a function. Oh, but that's now I have the iterator problem again. <laughs> So now, in theory, I can do that and also do this. Or not. Oh, wait. Yeah, it works. Could even be in line. Try cutting it if I do a uh... um, I do have a um, default on that. I guess I might as well do it here for now. back on this it wasn't like that if I can't be derived on this wrapper pack truck that does not derive copy what oh because of the references do it like that but um so how do I initialize this just like that not getting default though. I need that default, right? Okay, that works. So 
so now let's do more than one version and try to figure out the version. Okay, can I can I move this uh, function? Um, can I actually pass in the iterator? This is kind of silly. into iter all right then you think yeah i i don't need that anyway but drop into the point um can i do info into iter This is nasty. It's iterator. Right, so this doesn't need to be immutable. Oh wait, that did work with uh it did work with this, sorry. Oh but then I need into it or next. That works. So that makes a lot more sense than the into into iterator nonsense. And then I can just do that. Okay, okay, okay. That's good. And so then I can just do that. If it's a group, nothing. Otherwise, drop until semicolon. This is a lot less um, messy. Okay, um, that's looking good. Now for the version matching. Because right now I'm just unconditionally dropping everything. Um... Wait, what? All right, I need to... 
sorry if true I'm dumb. Uh, yeah, okay, so that that's fine. Um, so now I just need the um, version check function. shouldn't be a string, it should be some kind of a struct or something where I define the, uh, um, the possible multiple dimensions, so let's try, um, what's the right way of representing this? I guess I need a type for that, uh, the lifetime stuff And then I need to check, like, I'm using V here, um... Come down hard enough to slip back into C habits? Um... So, what's the best way of doing this? Um... I guess I need enums to be able to compare the values, but then how do I dynamically get that? to do like that. Uh... Yeah, they should be enums, but the problem is that I'm gonna get the tokens of string, so how do I convert that back? There's a crate, but we can't use crates, so... Yeah... So I'm thinking it, it shouldn't be an enum because... We're not actually, uh... It doesn't really need to be a type at this point. So then it might as well just be a, a list.
Kırıcılar Partisi. Yes, I can implement it, but I don't want to write the match for everything. I'm trying to keep this, uh, concise. So, I guess, um, just make a list, uh... Tuples working rust. I just parentheses. structure to declare all these versions things that we can have more than one um so it would be we need a list of fields um want the arrays for this so fields and Ah, 
have it then. Uh... Do they though? Slices because it's gonna be a uh, compile time, uh, based. So, is that how I? Have my uh, yeah, it would be fields. Can I just pass like um? Can I do this? Everything being static. Cost, right? Right, so that's Okay, that works. Wait, was it nine eggs? Okay, so now, uh, this is the And then we pass the the fields the ver and now for the version I just need to join them uh or is there a way to do that in Rust to join a slice of strings?
Peterson's thighs have a join method? And then for the first night, too, need this. Because I eventually will have different macro instantiations that um, I want to support um, different configurations. So that's why I'm wrapping this into a structure instead of just um, hard coding everything. Although it could be a trait that might actually make more sense.
like it's not quite doing what I want. separate I guess uh, I guess it, it, it would be uh, yeah they could be a recursive thing but that just complicates things Land version comparison stuff. That's if we're calling these G something and V something, but as well just be use those letters. Um then um In check version is where the fun has to happen. So, um, I got this uh, fancy token tree. stream from that and so now how do I parse this um is now how, how complicated a how complicated a language do you want to have here
I guess I might as well do that. Um, it's not that hard. So then instead of assuming a group, I'm just gonna match. Um, first, actually, um, If it's a group, then, Actually, um... If it's a group, then do that. Otherwise, if it's um, an ident, If it's an ident, then uh, we need to look it up in the config. Can form drops return values? Actually, does, do sizes have like index of members? Probably, right?
Is there a... A position? Ah, that's how you do it. Interesting. Can I do that? So that gets me the index of the check, and then I need the next token, which is actually, what is it gonna be? Are they... Can I do less than equal and stuff? Um, so does less than or equal show up? Okay, two different punks. And um, what's the best way of doing that? get the index and then let's get the operator
If it's a group, um, then... But that doesn't make sense, not after punctuation. Uh, so it's either an ident or a punct. Let's get the next thing. Have incompatible types. Oh, uh. Right, that needs to be ident. Uh. Just do the address as a string and then two string returns what on that? There's us car. There's a two string.
Can you not add uh, strings and rest? Okay, so now we have the right hand side, uh, the index. And then for a file is um, her key. Okay, what's broken now? So the left hand side is the version I send you the uh oh, I should pass the index through those. And now I need to convert that. It's a string containing a number. It's um, it's basically an enum done without an enum.
Can I do a for loop um, like an, with a, to get an index also? Oh, is it just ix? Oh, I need that enumerate. Okay, and now I can just do um, the thing to find. Config fields, not fields, config. Um, Enums. I. That iter. That position. Unwrap. No, G14G doesn't have a 123 because it's with you. That's the uh, M2. Um, so that's why I have that array of all the combinations because not all of them are valid. Uh, can't be a sorry. Thanks. Did that work? Oh, I so also need the uh, something to handle like ands and ors. So I guess I can keep parsing here if I if I have a check. If the boot lab is um token tree uh punked I 
Takže keď dnešte už sám... Cold blood is kind of a fact of life when you do this kind of GPU stuff because you want to be generic over the GPU versions, but you don't want to like dynamically check that in every uh, function. So you just kind of have to accept that like large parts of the driver are going to be compiled for every possible firmware version. But I mean, <laughs> GPU drivers tend to be pretty large anyway, so I don't think it's going to be a major issue. Yes, I know you can use config verb, but the whole point of doing this is not um, just compiling everything multiple times. You paint, we've gone through this already. Basically, I'm making a sort of generic um, struct system using macros so that I can have different variants of the same structure with only one definition.
<laughs> Almost there. Um. And we match that SSDR. Turns a string though. I can do that. Ah, that's not working though. That's not actually working. Okay, so now the versions. Yeah, look at that. It's working. It's um, checking the version. Oh, this one isn't though. Well, sorry, that's fine. Yeah, that works! It's doing what I want! I don't know if all the uh, variants are handled properly, but... That looks good! I can do this twice. Thing. I need to figure out this. I need to figure out the um, version concatenation thing. And so now, how do I look for that? the tokens there I guess basically it's a dollar and a fur so I can probably just do this um, if I have a dollar 
pretty much the same thing. Uh... Otherwise, we push the punked. Oh, the token and the next. And actually handling, handling the spawn here might be a little bit interesting. Um... Basically what I need to do now is uh, take the version Is there a map thing? For slices? Yeah, there's a map thing. Or not? Um, it's your map, maybe? Let's see if that works. Actually, can, can I just, uh, I can just pass it because I have here, I have this here anyway, um. Just um, push the ident plus um, the tag. Dot, yeah, where is that? String span. Uh, and for the span, actually, it's going to be interesting because I need. Oh, 
this would be interesting. Uh, resolve that. There's not a whole lot of non-nightly API here for me to use. Yeah, I need join, but I don't have that. Oh, sorry, not now. Um, I didn't. I need a. Uh... Oh wait, I need the previous one. That's a bit tricky. I guess I need to pop from out. Um. Anything? Can I have like a default that still takes the value? Oh, option doesn't implement this way. Just accept that the span is going to be not exactly what you expect because we can't. So I guess I'll just use the existing span. This is gonna need a string. That might work. Almost. Oh, the dollar's gonna break the same way, right? No, wait. Uh, 
yeah, because it still doesn't compile that. Ha, uh, 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 maybe we can do it. Something like that. Can I just return, uh... Yeah, it still wants something, so that doesn't work, um... What's, what's a good syntax for use for this? Uh, maybe I can do it like that? Yeah, that would make sense. Is there any other syntax that makes sense? work um because it still wants to type there oh, but you know what would work that would work Yeah, if I move it to before the field name, it would work. Um, but the problem is that then I can't, uh, like, compose the types, right?
actually, I, uh, it was just expect that. Gets the right versions. It uh, concatenates the uh, the field name and the version. I mean, I don't know if people will like what I'm doing here, but at least it's uh. At least it's um something. Let's do that um, to call it done. So you want to enter token stream. That works. Nope. Uh, sorry. Oh, there we go. That works. Some type for ABC. Yeah, that would fail because it wants the uh it gets that panic, right? But that's fine. Um I mean if we ever need that we can uh, add support for it, so and the GPU version names are based on what? They're based on what Apple calls them. So like G13 is um is the uh, M1 and D14 is the M2. And they are the, uh, so it's the off by one chip name because the M1 is the A12X and the internal name for A12 is H13. So G13 is the graphics for A12, which is M1. It's confusing. For composability, uh, I'm not sure how much that's going to be an issue in practice. Um, we'll see in the future anyway. I mean, I can always add that later.
And I mean, it's easy to add support for that. I would just, instead of panicking, just, um, send, like, um, push another open, um, angle bracket, and then just pass through the rest, so... Okay, that, uh, that works. Ah, uh, let me check the comments. Demon in the closet asks, um, how does Rust feel so far? Um, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's, um, it doesn't feel, like, overly different from C. Um, but, you know, obviously the type system is much better. And the... I'm st I still don't really have my head wrapped around the, like, borrowing rules, especially when it comes to, like, strings and stuff, because, you know, there's um, slices and strings and, uh... Yeah, so, like, no, I don't exactly know how the, uh... things like strings and iterators and, uh... and stuff like that interact with the borrow system, but I can mostly get around. So this is uh, one part of the uh, Rust um, story that I wanted to look at um, with the uh, being generic over firmware versions and uh, things like that. Um, there were others though. Um, the next sort of Rust related thing I would want to look at is how to um, encapsulate GPU objects and how to maybe use the type system to uh, be more hygienic about that because we have like GPU pointers which aren't CPU pointers so it doesn't make any sense to store them as like something that would look like a CPU pointer but they're still pointers so um, they would actually probably map to an object that does have a CPU pointer so there are, there are like implications with lifetimes and things here right um, so it would um, be interesting to see like how much of that can be encoded in the um, Rust time si um, type system to uh, sort of um, you know, take advantage uh, of that to uh, make sure we don't run into weird allocation issues with the firmware and things like that, right? Um, so next time, are we going to start running the driver? Um, so actually, next time, what I'm going to do is start looking at other um, GPU drivers in Linux and um, basically get an idea for how a driver should look, um, what it needs to do, what the APIs are and with the um, DRM interface. Um, and probably also plan out if I'm going to do, like, how much of it I'm going to do in Rust, if I do it in Rust and all that. And then, the next stream after that, I would start writing the driver, probably. Alright, so, like, sizes, I have no size, because they're dynamic. So, I need to borrow it, uh... Right, right, right. It has to be a pointer, basically, because it's, uh... So it's a fixed size, right? That makes sense. So, yeah, uh, this worked out pretty well. Let's, uh, let, just for fun, let's actually finish uh, writing out this structure because it's going to involve other structures as well. I think there is some embedding. Let's just uh, make sure that it uh, works for the use cases that I need. Um, so, firmware, AGX, micro sequence. Let's finish writing this out.
Alright, so this one doesn't have embedded structures. Um, just some pointers. We do have that egg stump thing. Um, how do I... Can I, I can have fixed arrays, right? Is that right? Or the other way around? default for that. Uh, yeah. And that's kind of annoying. Yeah, this might not be terribly easy, unfortunately. Uh, is there a way to at least get everything except the... Uh, except the ones that are missing the defaults? Because that wouldn't find one for that, right? need one of these oh and uh, this is gonna be yeah this needs that That didn't... Oh... Uh... Wait, when, why wouldn't that compile? And does it need, like, the colons? Ah, uh, right. 
right because of the... Ah! Uh, okay, that's a bit annoying now. <laughs> right, sometimes I need the columns on that. Does that work? Well done. I might want to do it with the columns instead. Yeah, that might work. Uh, let's, let's try that. Let's use the columns. It's Conan Conan. So then if we have a punctuation Look for the next one If it's that continue otherwise then Just push it um, So now we know when we have a colon and colon consumed uh, So then if we have a bar then Yep, take the previous thing and put that in otherwise you want that twice because it's called and colon. And now I don't derive the fault. Expected group. Okay, um, what happened there? Oh, wait, that's not. It's not close anymore. Uh, yep, and now I need to change that. Cannot return without recursing? But then it does need the default for right so that doesn't work yeah so that doesn't work i would have to set all of them ah
Yeah, I'm gonna just call this. Uh, what I really want is the vault for all the members. Are uh, the other members? But that doesn't. That's not what I want. Yeah, probably you're just, uh, the best I can do is just, uh, Mimsy Road. Which I'm not terribly happy about, but... But I'm not sure if there's a better way of doing it. And I could probably have like a padding type or things like that so that it automatically handles these uh, these issues, hopefully. Though then the generic, uh, yeah, the problem is the uh, the size, right? Yeah, I don't really want to coach in the default, um, but to be honest, probably, um, like, zeroed and then overriding things makes sense, so... Because these are going to be GPU objects. Um, there's definitely going to be some shenanigans as to how they're allocated. And, like, we can have the allocator. Um, like, we need we need placement anyway, right? So, we can have the allocator um, just zero everything anyway. Um, which you would have to. And, and then just assume it. And I kind of like this colon for thing a bit better. So what about a more complicated structure? Um, I'm curious about embedding. It should work. And to be honest, I could just make this bird thing always be like that. Like, always be required, and... And like have it in the identity too for a uh, consistency. So that might actually make sense. And besides for this one, the default needs some extra stuff anyway. Which one do I want to do? Maybe one of the crazy init data ones? It simplifies the uh, macro too if I do that. Here I can just do uh Okay. 
Yeah, can't actually give me one second. I'm going to uh Oh, this isn't all right they're separate uh I'm gonna commit just so that I can undo what I'm gonna do now. And then I think I can really just... Uh, yeah, I should be able to mostly throw all of this away. Okay, then I can just do body. Ignore the head. There's no ident in this case. Hey, can I just do this then? I need an out. Ah. Oh, I do need the extract. Um. Just to be head. Something like that. Just put everything in body and then... Just extend it with everything else. Doesn't like that. That's funny that it can't infer that. I would have, I would have expected it to infer that. Wait, can I just extend with the iterator? Yeah, of course, duh. And I guess if I'm doing this, I might as well just do like functions, like bare functions. Yeah, 
that makes sense. Does it work? Oh, and I don't have expect items anymore. That should still work. Uh... Oh, is this another one of those things where... Oh, wait, sh this should be fun. Oh, wait. Ah, no, it doesn't work. Because you can't have the codons there for the struct. So, I, unfortunately, I can't do this. At least for structs, I need the special case. Unfortunately... However, what I can do is do this differently, um, and a bit more easily. Instead of having that, um, done separately there, I can just do this, uh. Yeah, that'd be the same, right? Uh. So then I can just push that, uh... Push the name, and then I can do this. Case would be joined in this case. We don't really have a span for that. That doesn't really matter, to be honest.
might work. Yeah, that works. So it's a bit simpler than before because I can just reuse the logic for that instead of um uh, separately dealing with it here. Trying a different thing, something with embedded, uh, embedded structures. I mean, here's a pretty complicated one. Mind you, the substructures here don't change uh, based on version, but they could. Is there an easier one? Maybe not. Maybe something from init data, though these are pretty long and complicated. ones that are interesting so let's try those just to see if they uh, declare at least Version conditional. Which also is a negative one. Probably uh, 
do something with the python to generate this automatically actually and the key stats 3d did not change from version to version so i can choose not to do that for that one um For now. Actually, this might be kind of broken. It looks weird, but I need to uh, recheck that. Semicolon. Yeah, that compiles, and now that that is versioned, I can try having another. Why did I make these separate structs anyway? I forget. Because there were pointers into them, that's why. So I probably don't actually need to do it like that. Um, but just for the sake of the test. magic to programmatically print out the rust definition so should i do that uh, just one sec i'll be right back just one second
and I just realized that um, I don't need these funny naming schemes. Um, the we have him spaces. This is Rust, right? So it's fine. Um, in fact, I probably would uh, uh, declare these structures. Why is my face looking the wrong way? This tracking drifts. There we go. Um. So yeah, I can just get rid of that. And probably use the same names as Python. I could uh, normalize them. Ah, uh, well, okay. Rust doesn't like the underscores, but. So if I want to generate this from Python, uh, that's not too bad. What I can do is go in here. to rust and now in here I can basically just iterate through everything um Gonna steal some of this iteration if it's a struct. Uh, make sure it's always a struct. If it's not renamed, continue. We also need the version stuff. wrong by the way um Ignore lazies, uh, ignore pointers, 
The versions we'll have to figure out. The size or length or count? Count! Oh, there's no class? Um, subcon construct class what oh because the default yeah uh Something like that. Uh, so for everything, append uh, name. Enough for the values. Map get um uh, subcon
And here we have the version. So, subcon, subcon, uh, S equals. And do that in a sec. Uh, Did I do far? So we got min far and max far. that for now uh We have far if it's an array. And for hex dump, it's a uh, pass. This instance. Are all the best. Link is it? And then we have arrays of arrays. Um So this is out in, so... It's 
the other way around. Looking good. And then if it's a... Looking good. Need colors. And now to fix the versions. Um Then if we have a uh parser cause yes, bit better and everything. Um Let's do it here. Where's my self thing? Yeah, that looks, uh... I 
that the same as what I just did? Hmm? Yeah, it looks the same to me. Now I can convert it automatically. Uh, there's cons in there. I need to fix those. And then for the version structures, I would need to... Actually, I can check if there's any verse. I can have an is versioned. If there's any verse. Return true. And then... Version it if it is. And then I can check if it's a construct class. Is that sorted properly? I... Wait... Why is that not printing? I think it's not sorted. Yeah, it's not. Also, that didn't uh, work. Why is const... Const byte? That should be ignoring that. Why isn't it doing that? What is that not? Oh, because there's no name, right? Um... Right, I, I need to do something about that. If name is none... Something like that. Yeah, that would work.
that is an exclamation point. Um, I can just ignore that. Yeah, I think we're pretty good. Um, so... Let me just paste everything and see if it compiles. Oh, the, um... Wait, let me fix the ordering thing. Um... Why is it not sorted by the order of appearance in the file? Probably because some of the export stuff is not quite right. Because it's importing those. Ah, there we go. Now it's uh, sorted, right? Okay, and now I can copy and paste that and see if it compiles. Said I do actually need that apparently. Which I guess should be somewhere else, to be honest. didn't work hex format field why oh is hex not getting ignored Almost. Oh, yeah, obviously that's, uh... Right, um, GPS that's 3D. Um, I need to make that also versioned. So I need to make version that recursive.
pizza for these nuts. Yeah, now it versions it. Let's try just copying and pasting all that. Some warnings about the naming, but yeah, it works. Cool. So there you go. Now I can automatically convert all my Python structures into Rust. How's that? constant values so there's no like real sensible way to uh, figure out what they are i mean we'll be identifying more things as we go on of course but especially for init data there's always going to be a lot of unknowns oh isn't this wrong though region cs isn't that, isn't that missing versioning or did i just forget to version those i think i forgot to version those yeah, I think I just did that. and pushing um, but I can at least push this Something like that. I can push this to my uh, personal GitHub.
It's on GitHub now. Oh, I'd have to spend some time uh, doing the Python, so forgive me about that. I still have to clean that up and do the proper commits, because that goes in the real mini repo. the APIs are like and um, plan out the um, the real driver Anything else? writing driver on the same chance oh you mean like uh in the next stream um i don't know maybe we'll see um but there's probably quite a bit of uh, code to read on the other drivers so we'll see kingman says your model looks sleepy <laughs> sometimes yes we need to support all the versions that's why we're doing this like interface yeah the um the uapi is going to be the same as what i'm using for the shim mostly um with some changes for the buffer management but the uh i'm talking about the kernel the uh like there's like um you know the drm uh allocation related stuff all that um so i need to learn how that works i think this is really <laughs> yeah uh oh yes it means 